Sacrifices of joy. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. Sacrifice. Let's do it one more time. Amen. Well, we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. Amen. Come on, Sister Shirley. Praise the Lord. Good morning. It's so good to see everybody here this morning. I hope y'all have are having a great morning and a wonderful Labor Day weekend. I wanted to open up this morning. Um, with 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 through 19. And this is where Paul is showing his gratitude for God's mercy. It says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength to do his work. Not just Paul, but God has given us strength to do his work also. So if we have a healthy body, thankfully we are able and still able to do the work that God has called us to do. Says he considered me trustworthy and appointed me to serve him, even though I used to blaspheme the name of Christ. Well, before every one of us got saved, guess what? We probably did the same thing. So we're thankful for the Lord's mercy, his grace, and for our salvation today. Because without that, we would be a sinner and out in this world. But thankfully, we have the knowledge of Christ and we've become a servant, a bond servant of Christ. It says, in my insolence, I persecuted his people, but God had mercy on me because I did it in ignorance and unbelief. Thankfully, we were also that way. We were ignorant to the things of God, but thankful for his mercy and grace, and like I said, salvation, that now we are no longer persecuting other Christian people, but that we are going out and being about the Father's business, drawing people in to receive salvation. It says, Oh, how generous and gracious our Lord was. He filled me with the faith and love that comes from Christ Jesus. This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That was his mission. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and he's given us the great commission to go out and to reach sinners also. And I am the worst of them all. Paul admitted that he was the worst Christian, uh, uh, worst sinner of them all before he came to know Christ. But God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of his great patience with even the worst sinners. And you know what? I think that God wants us to have patience also. A lot of times it's easy for us to condemn and to judge. And sometimes we even do that with our brothers and sisters in Christ also. But God wants us to have patience with the sinner and to plead on their behalf in prayer. Says, then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. All honor and glory to God forever and ever. He is the eternal king, the unseen one who never dies. He alone is God. I'm thankful today that I know a risen Lord and Savior. I'm thankful today that God had mercy on me. If not, I'd be on my way to hell. 
but he saw what I could be, not who I was, but who he could make me to be. And I am very thankful for that. Let us pray this morning. Father, we are so thankful, God, for the opportunity to be in your house this morning. Yes. God, to give you praise and glory and honor because you deserve it all. Thank you, Lord, for saving me as a sinner, Lord, and God, giving me a new path in life. And God, I thank you and I ask, Lord, that even those that are out in, in this world uh, that are lost and undone without you, Lord, may they know your precious love through us, your servants, because we send out that love to every person that we come in contact with, Lord. Let them feel your mighty presence through us. Let us be lights and not of darkness, Lord, but let us be the light shining forth the pattern and the way for sinners to come to know you. In Jesus' name, amen. Worship with Brother Ray as he leads us in music. Amen. First song we're going to do is Jesus Hold My Hand. And when I saw that, I got to thinking about it. something I saw on Facebook this week. I don't know if my wife put it on there or somebody else put it on there. But it said that my children, when they fell and scraped their knee or their elbow or whatever, if I kissed that boo-boo, they thought it would be healed. They thought it was going to be okay. And uh, I guess that's kind of the faith we need to have in Jesus, isn't it? And don't matter what kind of boo-boo we have, whether it be a scrape and fall or whether it be in our heart, he is in control and he can heal that. Amen. Y'all sing with me. Jesus, hold my hand. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me. Leads me safely through the sinking sand It is the Christ of Calvary This would be my prayer, dear Lord, each day To help me do the best I can For I need the light to guide me day and night Blessed Jesus, hold my hand Jesus, hold my hand I need thee every hour Through this pilgrim land Protect me by thy power Hear my feeble plea Oh Lord, look down on me When I kneel in prayer I hope to meet you there Blessed Jesus, hold my hand let me travel in the light divine that I may see the blessed way. Keep me that I may be holy, thine and sing redemption song someday. I will be a soldier brave and true and ever firmly take a stand. As I onward go and daily meet the foe, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus, hold my hand. I need thee every hour. Through this pilgrim land, protect me by thy power. Feeble plea, oh Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. When I wander through the valley, dim toward the setting of the sun. Lead me safely to a land of rest If I a crown of life have won I have put my faith in thee, dear Lord That I may reach the golden strand There's no other friend on whom I can depend Blessed Jesus, hold my hand Jesus, hold my hand I need thee every hour Through this pilgrim land Protect me by thy power Hear my 
feeble plea Oh Lord, look down on me When I kneel in prayer I hope to meet you there Blessed Jesus, hold my hand Yes, amen As long as he holds his hand We can make it, can't we? Amen Praise the Lord. The road that I am traveling so often grows dim, overshadowed by clouds in the sky. But I'm looking unto Jesus, clinging closer to him. And he keeps me with his watchful eye. I can make it through the valley, over mountains, through the storm. Jesus keeps me so completely. I can make it. carry someday I'll lay down and I'll never have burdens again this old cross will then be traded for a robe and a crown when I've entered that land without sin I can make it Someday I'll lay down And I'll never have burdened again When this old cross will then be traded For a robe and a crown When I've entered that land without sin I can make it through the valleys, over mountains, through the storm. Jesus keeps me so completely. I can make it. Abides. <clears throat> I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the pilgrim way for the hand of God is all my life I see and the reason for my bliss yes the secret all is this that the comforter abides in me he abides he abides Hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way for the comforter abides with me. Once my heart was full of sin, once I had no peace within, well, I heard how Jesus died upon the tree. 
And I fell down at his feet And there came a peace so sweet Now the comforter abides with me He abides, he abides Hallelujah, he abides with me I'm rejoicing night and day As I walk the narrow way For the comforter abides with me he is with me everywhere and he knows my every care i'm as happy as a bird and just as free for the spirit has control jesus satisfied my soul says the comforter abides with me he abides he abides hallelujah he abides with me I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way For the Comforter abides with me There's no thirsting for the things of the world They've taken wings Long ago I gave them up and instantly All my night was turned to day All my burdens rolled away Now the Comforter abides with me he abides, he abides, hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way, for the comforter abides with me. didn't want to hear it in my Minnie Mouse voice, so. <laughs> Brother Spivey, come on up. We are honored today for Brother Spivey to come and bring the word. I've known this young man for a long time, and he is truly a servant of the Lord, and we are blessed and honored to have him, like I said, bring forth the word today. Thank you for being here today. Must be by myself. Thank you yes, for sir. being here today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, you could have been anywhere else, but you made up your mind to be here. You know what we're doing here this morning? I keep reminding every church that I go to what we're doing here this morning. We're helping God build his kingdom. Yes, and if you and I quit, Who's going to work on his kingdom? That's something for us to think about this morning. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to the book of Psalms 63, uh, 61. I don't have to tell you this morning that we're living in perilous times. We all are very much aware of that. And we've always needed God. We hadn't just started needing him, but we have always, always needed God. It took me 25 years to realize that I needed him. But thanks be unto the Holy Spirit of the Lord. Amen. That he opened up my blinded eyes and showed me my need of him. And I didn't need him for just one day, Brother Paul, or one night. I just didn't need him for that time that I got saved. I needed him all this time that I have been saved. I don't know about you, but I sit and I listen to the songs, and 
I'm so thankful that I got a hold of the hand of God and I where I'm now living in because I don't know who holds, amen, what else is out there, but I know who holds today. And this might be my last day upon the face of this earth. It's something for us to think about. I said, it's something for us to think about. This might be our last day. This might be our last gathering. The next time you gather, it could be at my funeral. Days are uncertain, but God's power and presence is always real. And I can't, amen, I'm not up here to tell you to get inoculated or not to. But I'm here to, amen, represent and tell you that the blood has never lost its power. I said, the blood of Jesus Christ has never lost its power. And what it done for me and washing my sins away, it's able to do. Amen for others. And I've got why I wake up every morning with a song on my heart. That's the best way to wake up. Amen, hallelujah. I, I, I woke up this morning with the song about sheltered safe within the arms of God. Let the old storm clouds rise. Huh? They don't bother me. For I'm sheltered safe. I'm sheltered, secure. Come what may, amen, in this life. I can be like the rider. All is well with the Lord. I'm beginning to feel those chill bumps move up and down my soul as I speak about my God because my God's real. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to talk about him this morning. Brother, I asked the Lord this morning, I said, Lord, why is it that, amen, old preachers are asked to speak? Amen. That's a good question for me. Why is it that anyone would Ask me to minister God's word. I'm an old man. There are plenty of other young preachers that got more energy and, amen, able to think more clearly and, amen, can do so much more than I can do. And, but I believe that I got the answer to that. David says, I was once young, but now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. And I believe, brother, us old people can tell some of these young people how great our God is. I believe us old preachers can tell our young preachers, hallelujah, what God is able to bring them through. We got some testimonies that the younger people don't have today because they hadn't been where we've been yet. And I'm glad that in God's word he said he was the same yesterday, today, and forever. And one day our young people will be old like I am and I pray that God will give them a testimony to share, amen, with the young people that they will be ministering to, amen, whenever they get old like I am. You see, I've been through a lot. 
but I hadn't been through it alone. Many times Satan has whispered and told me, brother and sisters, that there was no need to try. There was no hope of the morrow, but he's a liar. I said, amen, the devil's a liar this morning. He's the father of all lies. And I got something to say to these young couples and these young people and us old folks. Keep on keeping on. Amen. Keep on holding on. Don't give up. There's a miracle in the making. There is some hope for tomorrow. Amen. And you'll have to excuse me if I weep a little bit. Old people weep a lot. Huh? But it's tears of joy. Because I can look back and I can tell you this morning that I would have never got to where I am if it had not been for Jesus Christ. I would have never been saved. But because the Father loved me so much, he sent his own son that I could be saved. You see, Brother Parham, we are free this morning. This old world don't have us held down. This old world don't control us. We are filled with God's Spirit. And some people really don't understand us. And some, oh, amen, some church people don't understand us yet. But you see, as I told the church not too long ago, amen, when we are happy, and I'm happy this morning, I sing and I shout. They don't have to understand me. But it don't take the shout out of me. I want to read you about something about my Lord that the Lord has laid upon my heart. You know we all have a reputation. I've had two. (laughs) I had one before I got saved. I see some of y'all agree with me. That means you did too. But I've had one after I got saved. But then I want us to think this morning not on my reputation, but the reputation of God. What is God's reputation? God's reputation is he's a God that cannot fail. Well, I better read if I'm going to preach. I'll let you out just as quickly as the Lord says quit. Song 61 says, Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. For the end of the earth will I cry unto you when my heart is overwhelmed. For you have been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covet of your wings, Shalom. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life in his years as many generations. 
He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto your name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. And I say this, sheltered safe within the arms of God. We have too many people worried about what's going to happen next. But I want to tell you what's going to happen next this morning. He says, in times like we are living in, to look up because our redemption draws nigh. He tells me, amen, if I'll draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh unto me. Amen. amen. He tells me, amen, if I'll build my house upon the rock, that whenever the storms come and the winds blow, that I'm going to be able to stand. He also tells me, greater is he that's in me, amen, than that one that's in the world. And God has built him such a reputation, I'm going to put my trust in him. I can only speak for myself, but I'm like, oh, Joshua, as far as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Come what may, amen, hallelujah, I'm going to serve God. I'm not going to serve man. I'm not afraid about what man can do. Amen, hallelujah, because... I'm more reliable upon what God is able to do. Song 63 and 2 says, uh, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. He is that today. I know what the world is saying about Jesus. They hated him at the beginning, and they're going to hate him at the end. And they're also going to hate, uh, amen, you and I. The world would rather, amen, uh, be around their own. You know, the Bible says that the world loveth its own. And it does. But where is that commandment where the Bible says that we as God's people is to love one another? Is the world outdoing us with their love towards one another than the church is doing with our love toward one another? It's something to think about. He says that we are no amen, that we are children of the Lord simply because we love the brother and we love the sister. Amen. Verse 2 says, I want somebody to lead me to a rock that is higher than I. I'm in trouble living in this old world, amen, that I'm living in. Uh, I need something that I can rest in, something that I can put my confidence in, something, amen, hallelujah, that I can put my trust in, knowing, hallelujah, that it will not fail. I want to remind you this morning that the saving grace of Jesus Christ uh, is what we need. I need it at the beginning, and I'm going to need it at the end. Uh, you see, amen, it was Jesus that saved me, but it's my responsibility to keep my wedding garments without spot and without wrinkle. His advice to me this morning is, uh, amen, that I might come out from among the world uh, and be a separated people. 
If the world can't tell no difference in me this morning than what it was whenever I came to the altar, I need to get back down here. It's a living proof whenever we are born again, uh, amen, hallelujah, that the old man has died. We have come out from among the world, and we are separated from the world, and the devil has come, amen, and sowed tares among the wheat. Have you ever read that parable? I want to tell my brother and sister that is here this morning that Jesus Christ is so mindful of us. I mean, he is mindful of me this morning. But in the parable of the tares and the wheat, amen, we like to think about the tares that is growing up among the wheat, don't we? Huh? We know what the Word of God says. The Word of God says that, uh, amen, at the day that we are, amen, going to be gathered into our uh, eternal place that he was going to take uh, the, amen, the tares and burn them, uh, amen, and burn them up uh, and burn them. Hell is hot. Hell is a place that you're going to burn, but you'll never be destroyed. Jesus Christ says, The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life, and that you might have it how much? Uh, more abundantly. Oh, you're too quiet on me this morning to be Pentecost. If I was as young as some of you, I'd be shouting. But I got to save all the breath that I got to preach this message. Amen. But it, uh, in the wheat and the tares in that parable, I want the church to, amen, hear what I feel like God would have me to say this morning. Somebody says, some preacher says this, said, you want us to go and pull those tares up? My paraphrasing. And he says, no, you mess, don't you mess with them tares. You leave them tares alone. That's my work. And that's what's wrong with the church in the hour that we are now living in. Men are trying to do the work that God is only able to do. Huh? I see it everywhere I go. Men trying to do the work of Amen, that only God is able to do. And he tells them, he said, you let them uh, tears alone. He says, there's coming a day that I'll deal with them. But let me tell you what he really had his mind on. He said, you see, if you uproot those tears, you're going to pull up some of the wheat. It was the wheat that he had his mind on. Did you hear me? Amen. That was what all the, amen, that parable was about, was the wheat. And you know, amen, hallelujah, you can hurt somebody in church and have the family leave. Amen. And Jesus says, you leave my work to me. If you're going to judge anybody, you judge yourself. Boy, this is so quiet we could go to sleep. But God has gave himself such a, a reputation in Moses in his old age. Moses had got old. He says that he wasn't able to go out and come in. That's me.
But Moses had something to tell the people that he was fixing to leave. And lately, uh, Brother Paul, I've had leaving on my mind. I said, lately I've got leaving on my mind. You see, I've got more to go to heaven for this morning than I can imagine or think or either gather up. In Deuteronomy 31, 6, Moses said, Amen, I'm old, but I want to leave, amen, this younger generation something to think about. Where is our young people at today? Come on, that's a good question. Huh? Where's our young people at this morning? Maybe if we look down at Panama City Beach. Or Six Flags past Hell's Door. Where is our young people at? What are we leaving our young people? Who are we telling them to follow? You see, whenever I don't get an answer from people like I'm getting this morning, I know what they're saying. They're saying, oh, me. The Bible didn't say to let a child have his way to do what he wanted to do. The Bible didn't say amen to teach him not to work. The Bible says, bring up a child in the way that he, he should go, and whenever he gets old, he will not depart from it. Amen. I didn't come to whoop us this morning. You see, I'm not, uh, I'm not just preaching to you, but I'm preaching to myself. Moses had got old, he couldn't go out, he couldn't come in, and he left this testimony about the reputation of his God. He said, be strong and of good courage. Nor be afraid of them, fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doeth go with thee. Boy, that's some of them old preachers I used to listen to whenever I was a little young man. Ah, uh, He it is that goeth with thee, he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. That's God's reputation. Friends may walk away from you. Friends may leave you. But Jesus Christ said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Amen. You can't beat that. You can't beat that young person. You can't beat that old person. And you know, amen, you are had an age on you this morning that you can look back and you can tell those young people some things because God has brought you through so much. You've killed a bear. You've killed a lion. Amen. Hallelujah. You have asked God to renew his strength within you at times whenever you was weak, and he did. Amen, and you destroyed the enemy. He's come against you, and you've upheld the manner, eh, the banner of Jesus Christ right in the midst of the battle whenever you should have lost. 
you won. Hmm? It wasn't because, amen, altogether who you was. It was all because of who God is. And God is not was, he is. God is God, and whenever we let God be God in our lives, we can sing victory in Jesus and know what it means. And some of us sitting here this morning, amen, needs to hear the reputation of Jesus Christ because, amen, many times old Satan will whisper to us, there's no need to try. I can't tell you the people that I've talked to in the last year or the year and a half that has gave me, there's no need to try. There's no hope. But they are. But they are hope this morning. We can hope in Jesus Christ. We are not a people without hope. We are a people of hope. And I want to tell the church something this morning. Amen. That uh, I feel like that the Lord's fixing to take the hinderer out of here. It's been brought, uh, amen, uh, uh, brother and sister, before I arise, what happens whenever the hinderer, amen, is taken away. What happens whenever the hinderer is taken away? You think it's bad now, you wait till the hinderer is taken out. You see, amen, uh, we've just seen that in Afghanistan, because the United States of America was the hinderer. And whenever they taken the United States of America out of uh, Afghanistan, what happens? The enemy comes in like a flood. No resistance. And whenever Jesus Christ raptures his church, uh, there'll be no resistance. None. And young people, listen to me this morning. All the people, listen to me this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not as bad as you think it's going to be bad. It's going to be worse. You cannot imagine Amen, what it's going to be like. We're just getting a drop in the bucket. The state of California just offered to pay people to keep from shooting one another. That's the mark of, amen, that's the, the beast of mankind. Amen, you think lions and tigers and bears are bad? Come on. Amen. Uh, you just look at what man is doing to man. I have a little, amen, young girls and boys are being in, amen, trafficking in the hour that we are now living in. Jesus Christ says uh, that he's not going to tolerate this long, uh, that he's going to come and take his people home. And I'd ask you this morning, both old and young, to consider Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Huh? That's a good thought. You know, we all know where we'd be without Jesus. You see, this, thing, this book here is filled full of blessings. It is. But you've got to be on what we used to say, the right side of the fence. Amen. You see, hallelujah, when we face old Chili Jordan, you're going to need more than a song and a prayer. You're going to need to know Jesus Christ as your personal 
Savior. Not something that grandma had. Not something that grandmother had. Amen. But it's something that you personally got. Something that has happened to you personally. Oh, I know that what I'm talking about. I can remember, amen, my good brother Jake Logue. Preaching the gospel, amen, hallelujah. And me sitting there and watching that man. He was a man that could preach the house down. He was a man that could preach so hot that he'd make the devil mad. In fact, he made me mad. <laughs> Preaching that old sanctified message. Uh, my feelings been hurt in church a lot by somebody being truthful. And it's the truth yeah. that'll set you free. And I thank God, amen, uh, whenever I see some people, hallelujah, that their fathers and their mothers preach the word of God and preach it like it was said. I'm here this morning to preach it just like the Bible says. Hell is real and so is heaven. And I'm here to tell you this morning, whenever you die, you're going to go to one or the other. And I'm here this morning to tell you that the day is the day of salvation because you have no promise of tomorrow. And I'm here, amen, to testify, amen, of the reputation of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that whosoever will can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. In other words, what I'm saying to this morning, uh, amen, get your name off the church roll and to the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Whether we live or whether we die, it's unto the Lord. And He is the righteous judge. He don't make no mistakes. He's perfect. And if you're worthy to enter in, he'll say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. If you're not, he'll say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Oh, my God, hear me this morning. Sheltered safe within the arms of God. Whether I live or whether I die. Oh. Boy, I just felt a cool breeze. Could that have been the breath of God? Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. Run, da, 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 kori, and da, 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 da. So you see, maybe I'm asked to preach because I can tell you how great my God is. He's great enough. He's great enough. If you got Jesus, you got enough. I can tell you about the time, amen, that my wife broke her leg and the doctors told her, said, you're going to be a cripple the rest of your life. Oh, but that's not what God said. Huh? God says all things are possible with him 
So what did we do? We just took her down to the First Assembly of God on Franklin Street, and they gathered around her, anointed her with oil. And she took off a running. Not next week, not next month, not next year, but that night, God done the impossible. But I shouldn't be surprised at that as I read this book. Huh? This is my true story. You like to read through true stories? Come on. Everything that happened in this book is truth. It's a truth book. Because the truth wrote it. All right. You hear that at 12 o'clock hour? It's 12 o'clock. But one day, that midnight cry will come. And it's the only thing that's going to matter then, whether you're in the graveyard or standing here, will be that you're saved. That's the only thing that's going to matter. God's not going to ask you amen before you went to church. You know, we got those Sabbatites. You know what a Sabbatite is. Amen. Those are the people that only believe in the Sabbath. You know those Sunday Christians that says, oh, today's Sunday. I'm going to keep it holy. And then you got six more days, you're unholy. You don't know nobody like that. Those people used to worry me. Huh? But God spoke to me one time and said, don't worry about them, worry about yourself. Huh? Sabotites. Ah. Ah. You know any of those? I know a few. I know a few. But I'm just so glad this morning that I, I'm not one. But it's seven days in a week. 52 weeks in a year. And 82 years to my life. And I believe that I got something to say to young people. That my God is greater than anything you'll face in this life. Anything. Anything. And I guess that's why I'm here this morning. It's not that I'm a good preacher. I'm not a good preacher, but my name's in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I'm going to help God work on his kingdom. And I'm going to gather in as much of the sheaves as I can. May the Lord bless you this morning. Somebody come to the piano, brother, if you want to come. Amen. I feel pretty good. I feel strong enough to bring it to you if you don't feel like coming. I want him to play whatever the Lord lays upon his heart. And I just want to ask you a simple question this morning. If death must knock on your door today, young or old, how are you standing with Jesus? Have you accepted him as your personal savior? Do you feel in your heart this morning that you're just not going to be ashamed of God and that 
Amen. You're just going to get up and admit who you are and admit where your shortfallings are and come to Jesus. Just like you are without one plead. But that his blood was shed. Heavenly Father, I've sent the invitation out. Now, Holy Spirit of the Lord, I ask you to do the drawing this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.